What's up students? Welcome back to class. It's your sensei PGT. Today I'm going to show you how easy it is to make your own sterilized oat grain jars so that you can grow mushrooms. For this process we're going to want whole oats for this. Not rolled oats or oatmeal or quick oats or instant oats. No, no. You want the ones for animal feeding. Whole oats. Now why do we want oats? Well, because it's cheap. You can get a 50 pound bag of oats for only $15 at your local feed store. And with that much grain, you're going to be able to grow mushrooms for a very long time. Alright, so we're going to start here. I'm going to measure out four quarts of whole oats. This is enough to make about eight or nine jars of grain spawn. The rule of thumb here is to measure out about half the amount of jars you're looking to get. Now remember, the oats is going to expand when we boil them and absorb water. And you don't want to fill it all the way up to the top. You want to have some space in there so that it's easier to shake up your grains later during colonization. So go ahead and dump your oats into a pot and then we'll go ahead and fill this pot up with water and we're going to bring this to a boil. You want the water level to go above the oats a considerable amount. You want about two times as much water as you do oats in your pot. If you're unsure it's better to be safe with having too much water than not enough water and then having your pot boil and run out of water. Now we'll go ahead and set your pot on the stove, turn your heat on to high, and we'll bring this up to a boil. And we want to boil this for about 30 minutes. Once your 30 minutes is up, turn off the heat, and we'll drain this through the colander. I find 30 minutes to be the sweet spot. If you leave it in there for longer, you're going to get a lot of burst grains, and that's going to be very difficult to use for your grain jars. So, 30 minutes is pretty good. If you have a couple of burst grains here and there, that's okay. Don't worry about it. All right, after we drain through the colander, we want to go ahead and grab the grains out and we'll spread these out on a flat surface to air dry. I like to use baking pans for this. I find this allows me to spread them out on a large flat surface. If you have like a screen mesh or something to spread them out on, that will work a lot better and to allow them to dry quicker. Uh, but I don't have that right now. So I'll be using these baking dishes here. Uh, so spread them out here while they are still steaming and hot. Uh, this is going to allow them to dry much quicker. Uh, I'll leave them out for about half an hour to an hour. The steam is going to help evaporate the water off. Uh, and we'll get these as dry as we can. The drier the better. You pretty much want moisture to be on the inside of the grain, not the outside. Here's an overall picture of how my grain drying process looks. Here's a neat little trick here that you can test to see how dry your grains are. You want to spread some of these grains out on a piece of uh, tissue paper. Uh, toilet paper works too. Uh, spread them out on there and then just drop them off. And you don't want any large pools of water on your tissue paper. Just little small specks here and there is fine. Uh, this is in the case that they're mostly dry for the most part. So. When they look like that, uh, they're good to go. We'll go ahead and load them up in the jars here. And uh, we'll get the jars prepped here to uh, get ready to sterilize them. And remember, when you're filling up your jars, leave a little bit of a gap at the top here so that you have room for the grains to be able to shake later on during colonization. You don't want to fill this all the way up to the top. Now that the jar is filled up, we'll go ahead and put the lid on here. I am doing my unmodified lid setup here. Uh, what I'll do is I'll flip the lid over on top of the jar and I'll uh, screw on the ring. And what I'll do is I'll unscrew it uh, about a quarter or an eighth of a turn to make sure that the cap is loose. Now we'll go ahead and cover our lid here with aluminum foil. This is to prevent condensation from falling on top of our lids here as we're pressure cooking. Now once you have your foil on, just double check to make sure that the uh, lid is still a bit loose. And then we're good to load them up in the pressure cooker. Right here I'm making nine grain spawn jars. I'll go ahead and fast forward through this uh, process here. We 
quick your lids on. We'll go ahead and get ready to pressure cook, sterilize these jars here. So a little quick rundown on how I use my pressure cooker. I'm using a Miro 22 quart pressure cooker here. I'll go ahead and fill up about three quarts of water into the bottom of the pressure cooker. Uh, I personally like this amount. Uh, the water amounts will vary depending on what size pressure cooker you're using. Uh, you pretty much want enough water to cover at least the bottom of the trivet. It can go up the jars a little bit. You just don't want it to go uh, really far up the jars. Uh, so if it comes up a little bit past the bottom, that's okay. I'll go ahead and load up the pressure cooker with all of my jars here. Now there's many different types of pressure cookers out there. So remember to read the manual on how to operate yours. It was different than the one that I use here. And with these size pressure cookers, I can fit about seven jars on the bottom layer here. And I'll lay uh, two jars up on top here. You can actually fit three up on here, uh, but I don't have any, I don't have an extra one at the moment. So I'll, I'll just have two on the top here. So I'll go ahead and put the lid on the pressure cooker and uh, we'll go ahead and close this up. And I'll go ahead and uh, turn the heat on to high and I'll set the timer here for about 15 minutes. All right, once your 15 minutes is up, you'll notice the safety lock on the pressure cooker is popped up and there's a constant stream of steam coming out of the top hole. Uh, now I'll go ahead and I'll drop the weight on top of this. I'm using a weight suitable for 15 PSI. I'll add the weight here and uh, set another timer for 15 minutes. All right, now my heat is still on high, if you notice here. Uh, with my timer, it's uh, slowly blinking down from the 15 minutes and you can see the weight is starting to, uh, what I call, it's doing a dance. <laughs> uh, so this is how you know when your pressure cooker is at the appropriate pressure. Um, the pressure is going to try and push the weight off and the weight kind of pushes it back down uh, so that it stabilizes at 15 psi. So uh, once the heat is on high, this is how you build up pressure inside the pressure cooker. And uh, you want the weight to pretty much jiggle for about once every minute or so. Uh, you don't want it to constantly jiggle. And once it reaches the desired pressure, you go ahead and turn the heat down from the high to a medium high. This way we're going to be able to maintain the pressure in there. If you keep it on high, it's going to keep building up pressure and the weight's just going to rock like crazy. So but make sure you do this step. It's very important. All right, so we'll set that to medium high and then we'll set a timer here for 90 minutes and this is how long we're going to pressure sterilize for. All right, after 90 minutes I'll go ahead and turn off the heat and I'll let this cool down overnight and uh, don't mess with the weight here just leave it on. Uh, the whole pressure cooker is going to depressurize itself on its own as you leave it to cool down. So come back the next day uh, once everything's cooled down and we'll go ahead and open up the pressure cooker and we can transfer the jars into your still air box and they'll be ready to use. And that's it. That's all there is to making your own sterilized grain oat jars. Now what I like to do with my grain jars is I'll tighten up the lid and give them a good shake to uh, mix up the moisture content in there. The grains will soak up the extra moisture so it won't be as wet. And again, I just wanna stress the importance of reading your pressure cooker manual. It really is for your safety, and safety is our number one priority. Please follow the manual. Went ahead and created a FAQ here, and uh, I know these questions are probably going to come up in the comments here, so I'll go ahead and just cover that in this little portion of the video here. You can pause the video if you want to read through it. And that's it for today's class, my students. Stay till the end as I will be shouting out to my golden students as a thank you for your support. There was no difficult names and I was able to pronounce everyone's names perfectly and correctly. If your name is tricky to pronounce or you want me to say your name, please join my Patreon and test my ability and have a little fun. Shout outs here to Jeffrey K, Matthias T, Tanya W, Kayla W, Brock T, Fibonacci, Casey W, The King of Spores, Alex M, Rigi, Alyssa, and Gil K. Thank you to these amazing people for supporting the PGT team. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed the content, please hit the like button. Leave comments below and subscribe for more videos. 
If you want to discuss and learn more about mushrooms and mycology, come join us over on the Discord server. And if you want to show some support by becoming a golden student, you can check out my Patreon. All links will be in the description below. I'll see you guys in the next video.